It's a powerful sight. A glacier. This one, more than 5,000 years old. But for as old as it is, the end of its life is quickly coming. As soon as we get to the snow, we'll put on the crampons. Maury Pelto has been meticulously documenting this glacial melt for more than four decades. There's the observer mode. You're just taking the measurements and trying to understand what's happening so you can tell the story. But then later, when you reflect, it'll get to you. For him, this loss is personal. The Lower Curtis Glacier in the North Cascades is just one glacier Maury monitors each summer. Every July and August, he and his team spend three weeks in the North Cascades. This summer, they'll hike to 10 different glaciers. This project started for Maury in the 1980s when climate leaders knew mass melting was about to intensify. So they advised that monitoring start immediately to understand the scope. Maury chose to devote the next 50 years to documenting the North Cascades. That was 1984. Now, 42 years later, and he's seen with his own eyes how far glaciers like this have receded. Like a lot of glaciers, you can see where it's really struggling. There's a wall on the far side of the glacier, a little couloir that goes up. And there's now there's a ton of rocks poking out through that. And that used to be just a smooth snow face. We'd just walk right up it. And so when you start to see rocks emerging from below the glacier in an area that should be an accumulation zone where snow never melts, that's when you know the glacier can't survive. After decades of data collection, He's now responsible for three of the world's 60 longest documented glaciers called reference glaciers. 2023 was the first year when every single glacier in the network had a lost mass the same year. In 2024, it happened again. So that's telling you, it doesn't matter what mountain range in the world you go to, the story's the same. In the U.S., there are only eight states that have glaciers. Half of all glaciers in the lower 48 are found in the North Cascades, but those are quickly shrinking. When Pelto started his research in the 1980s, he says there were about 700 glaciers in this range. In the last 45 years, 100 of those glaciers have been lost, with most of them lost in the last decade. And the melting is speeding up. You can use me as a reference point. I'm 5'9". From 1984 to 2012, the average mass lost per year was about two feet. That number nearly tripled in the last decade. From 2013 to 2024, the average mass lost per year was about five feet, six inches. So basically the same height as me lost every year. We'll laser the kind of the steepness of the tongue. Every summer, the team measures the slope and height and width of the glacier. You just count up the annual layers. We have about 35 years worth in sight here. They take measurements of the crevasses. We'll drop the instrument down and it'll hit the bottom. Perfect, right through the hole. Checking how deep they are. 21 feet. They check the snowpack sitting on top. At this point in the year, we'd want 80% of the glacier to be covered in snow. Seven, five. But it now sits at 50%, meaning the melting snow will leave the glacier exposed and more prone to melting, expecting to lose 4% of its total volume this year alone. The team measures that melting outflow. Kind of the flow direction. This year, Maury was able to walk across the stream of ice cold glacial water, a first and not a good milestone. It's not a good change because that means the ice is uh, retreating really quickly here. That's Jill Pelto, Maury's daughter. I'm going to be measuring some crevasses up there with the laser rangefinder. This is her 17th year joining her dad on his summer research trip. When she came out here after her sophomore year at high school, it was a tough, tough year to do it. I love getting to see these same, same places every year and kind of now my relationship with them is so intimate that it's hard not to just want to keep coming and see how they keep changing. But Jill brings a different set of eyes and skills to this team. Art can be that connection, I think, between that kind of more factual information that can be technical, can be tough to understand, can be hard to relate to, and it can kind of, I think, break some of those barriers. She creates art that is based off this glacial melting data. I'll want 
the angle of the slope. Working graphs and information into images. Trying to dig into some of the stories of what we're what we know about these landscapes, what we're learning and observing and measuring and share like more kind of actual information with people and also trying to really share like the kind of the, the beauty of these places and kind of the emotions tied in with that science. This summer team is a mix of scientists and artists bridging information and emotion. For Jill, it was, uh, you know, she became my partner. <laughs> And happily, it's hard to imagine doing this without her. It became something that obviously, like, has changed my whole life, and I think it's shaped, it shaped a lot of people involved in the project. The numbers are powerful. 20% of this glacier has been lost in the last five years alone. But as they climb inside, you can't always get under a glacier like this. They see signs that it's still alive. I love the different light coming through the layers. This cave is at least 50 years old. You can really see under here how the glacier moves so much material, like builds up. But this will soon subside. This glacier is expected to disappear in Jill's lifetime. So every summer, they'll return, documenting the mass lost. You think of that story, uh, the lower actually speaks for the trees and we speak for the glaciers. It's not a happy story. This father-daughter team chipping away at awareness as these glaciers slip away faster and faster. For Environment Northwest, I'm meteorologist Leah Pacetti.